So Kiki is asking a question. Quick question. Recently, USA Today published a stupid article saying pedophilia is determined in the womb. Doesn't this reek of misogyny by the woke movement? Okay, Kiki. What? You sent me this article. I read it. We've been arguing about this a little bit on Discord. I think you're totally wrong. Okay, so for those who haven't read this article, it basically talks about um, pedophilia. I think we all know what we're um, we're saying. Um, I, the, just to, just to be clear, a lot of people say like, "Hey, I've seen other channels talk about this, and they don't get a strike." We don't get a okay. So guys, we're not saying we're going to get a strike. What we're saying is that we're just going to get slightly deprioritized if we use certain words, okay? And we our and those channels are big, and they're not struggling. Our channel is struggling, so we have to be careful with what words we use. But yeah, go on. Sorry. Um. Basically. If I had to summarize, this article talks about many different things that go into pedophilia and how it um, many public perceptions of it are misinformed, and we have a lot of research about different things that can um, give rise to this phenomena. So, saying that there are some findings that show that fetal environments may affect someone's proclivity towards pedophilia is not blaming women. That's crazy to me. You were really trying to argue to me that just because there are, again, some findings that say that a fetal environment may contribute to this, does not attribute that to women. There are some things that women can slightly control about their the fetal environment that they provide in their womb, right? It has a lot to do with the nutrition you have. It has a lot to do with the um, stressors in your environment, different hormonal washes going through, or if you're exposed to toxins in your neighborhood, things like this. Right, but there are a lot of things uh, about your freedom that you cannot necessarily control. I honestly think, Susanna, you're taking this too seriously. This is so obvious, Kiki. I'm sorry to say this. this is so obviously moronic. I I can't believe Susanna is actually responding to it. Like, what are you talking about? Just because something, like if if you suggest that something happens in the womb, you're being and you're being mis like I don't even know why we're responding. <laughs> like, why are you taking this so seriously? Um. I mean, maybe like people are actually liking your response, so maybe I'm wrong. I just think it's such a against Kiki. I'm sorry to say, but why well, actually I'm not sorry to say this is such an obviously moronic point to make. I don't even know what to say. Suggesting that something happens in the womb is and blaming it's a negative thing. This is woke misogyny. It's blaming. I was like, what? They're like, they're. Bl Can you believe that the woke are now blaming women for pedophilia? I'm like, how? Like, what if it's true? But it's what not the, the women's fault as if they have control. I, I know. It. Like, it's partially what goes into the fetal environment is also controlled by your own genes that were passed down before you. Like, so. <laughs> <laughs> like, these are these are things that are partly biological partly genetic that we don't just have control over and people don't attribute blame to those things yeah you're like, you're, you're okay you're still what? taking this way too seriously this is just a dumb comment it's well because I, I want I just, to damn okay okay All right. i just think like we're giving it too much okay here but here's the thing i this this might be a controversial take i hope that the if these results are true, it goes further into not demonizing these people and instead trying to treat them. Okay, a, a lot of people think that uh, you're doing children a service by demonizing these people that are dealing with curse, with like a curse of nature, right? Like a lot of people who want to keep virtue signaling, especially the disgusting people who keep referring to these people and they say like, oh, they want to shoot them in the head or something like that, right? Um, or like, oh, I wish I want to see them, you know, burn alive or this and this, and they deserve to die. You are you're discuss discussing human beings who talk about um, other people like that, and you are putting children at risk. You are making people who are suffering from a mental illness um, demonize them to the point 
where it makes them very unlikely to be able to be able to tell everybody that they have this problem and by making less of them seek help seek help because of the level of demonization that exists in society against these people you are putting children at risk you are trying to virtue signal about how morally uh, uh, how, how like how uh, virtuous you are and how moral you are by competing with other people uh, uh, with how and honestly i think for a lot of people the level of ag um, aggressiveness that they go after um, these people who are experiencing these mental illnesses suggests to me that some of some of the, at least some of them are experiencing it themselves and they're just trying to hide it by being so aggressively violent against these people okay but again even if you're not experiencing that yourself i mean if you are i hope you go and seek help instead of trying to um hide it by being this this violent um but if you're not, I hope you understand that you're part of the problem. You're part of the reason why children are at risk is because you're creating an environment where it makes it very difficult for these people to actually admit that they have a problem. This is exactly what we're talking about. Hold the line as if you're some freaking warrior. Who are you LARPing as? No one is saying that they should be allowed to harm children. Unbelievable. We're, this isn't Dumbest. what we're talking about. We're talking about being able to go to a professional and say, I have this thing that I've been cursed with that I need to be addressed so that no one is ever harmed. In terms of prosecuting when a crime happens, that should 100% be done to the fullest extent of the law, period. But this attitude of just like line them against the wall, that's not gonna help anyone. And also we don't yes. believe in the death penalty here. <laughs> and also we don't believe in punishing any, anybody for something that they have no control over, right? It's well, so amazing how control over if you harm children. Yeah, but I know, but these people don't understand the difference between the act and the disease. Okay? We have a mental disorder, okay? That's different from the people who actually committed a crime. Having a mental disorder and acting upon it are completely two different things. And for you for people not to be able to comprehend that these are two different subjects just shows that you know i don't know you're you're you, you are incapable of even the slightest amount of nuance um yeah so treat treat people treat people who are dealing with this you know disease kindly so that they actually feel safe to reach out for help if not for their sake Okay, because you guys think like people who apparently have been naturally, you know, unlucky, right? If you think that they are not deserving of happiness, if you don't think that they deserve to live lives that are not um, filled with pain just because of what happened, just because of how their mind operates, if, if you are incapable of sympathy, okay, for those people, at least do it because of the consequences to children. Okay, if they do not feel safe to seek help for this, they're more likely to be a risk to children. So at least I think do it for children. Yeah. It's also really important to consider and bring up the fact that it is not this is this is still an issue that is worthy of a lot of research. And it's not just, oh, we already know it's just genetic and biological and that's just how it is. There it are a lot of studies about how people who have experienced this form of abuse against them as a child, there yes. are correlations with them then going out in their life and repeating that. And right. so there are environmental factors that lead to this as well. And especially for those people, we should have a degree of empathy for them. Cause that's, a, that's a very, um, this, it's a hurt people, hurt people kind of situation. Right. So something that people don't understand is that when we say something is natural, it doesn't mean that it's um, all genetical, right? Um, natural also includes environment, something that is environmental, right? Like the womb is an environment. Like if something happens post birth in the womb, 
it's still natural. It's still based on, but also environmental, right? And also if something happens even after birth, um, because of like the experience that you had, if you're more likely to be one of these people, um, that is still something that is natural, even though it might not be genetical, even though it's po it happened to you post birth, it still will make it something um, that happened to you naturally. Even, you know, so those are not mutually exclusive, right? So we're not saying, if I say something that is a curse of nature uh, that happened to you, I'm not saying that it happened, pre. all of it happened pre-birth. It could, it could be genetical, it could be environmental in the womb, it could be environmental after the womb, but it could all still be completely natural. Again, I'm not committing the natural fallacy. I'm not saying it's okay because it's natural. I'm just saying because it's natural, um, it's something that you can't necessarily blame people for having the disease, for having the mental disorder. Uh, it's something that you have to treat for it. And if, I mean, by treatment, I don't mean like, it doesn't, there doesn't seem to be a treatment for it. By treatment, I mean um, alleviating the pain, creating situations where people who have this are less likely to commit a crime. You know what I mean? So, but uh, when I say treatment, a lot of people think like means like, they, they they will get rid of the mental illness. Like I'm not suggesting that treatment could mean different things, right? Yeah. Sometimes it involves a form of um, chemical castration. Sometimes it involves um, just developing interventions around um, creating structures in your life so that you're not around children. You just structure your life so that you don't allow yourself to have that in your envir environment at all. I. Th I so there are lots of different forms of interventions. Well, this is a spicy question from Horus. Oh, um, oh Jesus! <laughs> I, have a, I have an answer for this, okay? Um, so Harris is saying, Armin, do you think we should create dolls of, uh, of children for them? Uh, it would be a victimless crime. Um, I would say it depends. Um, if research shows that that will decrease the likeliness of them committing um a crime with a, a crime that has a victim um if it if it decreases the chances of that then yes and if it increases the chances of that then no right so but people what people do instead is they just, they just guess they're like oh no if we do this it will make it will just encourage them to do like to do to do it right and some people are like no it will discourage them because they will have an outlet to do it, uh, to do it somewhere else right well you don't know you're just like talking people are just guessing so i think if data shows that it like guys as much as this, as disgusted as you might get about the idea if data shows that it reduces the number of victims at the end of the day what do you care about do you care about your level of disgust or do you care about reducing the number of victims? Like, are you going to prioritize you being more comfortable with something, you being less disgusted over the lives of children who might be victims of this behavior? What is more important to you, okay? So it depends on the data. If data shows that it will reduce the victims, then go for it. If data shows it increases the victims, then don't ban it, make it illegal. At the end of the day, the victims are the priority. Look, look, people are saying that will encourage yeah, them to take them. This, how do you know? No, wait, here's the thing. Oasis, how do you know that? Again, if it does, then it should be banned. But how do you know that? Do you have data on this? Have you done a research? What if it does the opposite? Then then you you don't know that. But go on. Um, I remember uh, doing a little bit of research on this about different interventions and if um, exposure to different types of, I'll just say sec sexual stimulation of this type um, is uh, preventative because it's sating in need or if it actually incentivizes more and what everything I've read so far, I, I, I don't think um, it was it involved anything similar to a doll, but um, it, everything is inconclusive. But it's also really hard to know how do you go about safely and ethically testing um something like this um without making sure that in the process of testing and doing research on this that you're not um allowing people into the community where they could do harm in an effort to try to learn more about it so it's really really tricky and hard yes 
Um, I think a lot of studies that have been done have been on people who, and this is, I think, I can't quite remember because it's been a long time since I've looked into this, but I think it was mostly on people who are already incarcerated for this kind of thing, which is already a sp very specific population um, of people who actually go to the step to offend. Um, yeah. Yeah, somebody's saying, inshallah, science finds a way to fix this. Yes. <laughs> inshallah, please, <Na> inshallah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right oh wait right, so here's here. a question i really want to... oh thank you okay <laughs> um go ahead i watched a really interesting documentary on this i think it was called like p file ranch i think it's streaming on amazon and i would encourage people to go watch that documentary um because mm. it um was a way of looking at this issue that I had never considered before. Um, hmm. That was very you interesting. Know, if somebody has this disease and they have made sure that they get help and so that they don't harm anybody and they recognize it, like n not only you shouldn't be hating on somebody on, on that, you should be congratulating them, right? Somebody who is, imagine somebody, like imagine how, what a hell that person is living it, right? When the only, the the way that they get like the, what the rest of us enjoy from life, um, they get it through something that is so harmful. Okay, imagine living in that kind of a hell, right? Uh, but imagine them recognizing that. Imagine them recognizing that they have this desire, but this is harmful, and they shouldn't do it. You know. And, and, and they want to make sure that there's no victims of, of, uh, for the, because of the desires that they have. You should be congratulating that person, right? You shouldn't be demonizing them. You should be congratulating them. It's not, you know? I mean, that's, that's one think, thing. Think about the rest of it. Think about the people who like, you think that's, think about this like quitting, like quitting smoking. Like that's like, that would be probably, that's not even something that is, there has you know that's something that is easier to like give up like there's a cure for that right there's no cure for this there's a cure like if you're a smoker and you're trying to beat up smoke I think people have successfully managed to quit that and imagine even though that's something that is successful in defeating imagine how many people have said that it's like it's an addiction that it, it was very difficult or just addiction to drugs right as difficult as those are they're not difficult as, as difficult as this because people have successfully managed to give up ad, you know alcoholism or addiction to drugs or stuff like that imagine being cursed with something that you can't even is so strong that there's no cure for it right and then having to deal with that right i mean with alcoholism at least the victim is you or maybe your family and stuff like that right and so many people have a, a struggle with dealing with that. But this is so much, this is much impossible to defeat. And at the same time, the victim, the, uh, the, the severity of the uh, harm to the victim is a lot higher. So a much, much more powerful, um, you know, disease, you know, or a, 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 and at the same time, a much, much higher consequences of harm. So imagine you being in the middle of all of that. It's it's a, it's a hell. It would be a hell. That I think that's one thing I liked about the documentary that I watched about this subject is because it profiled some people who were non-offending and had this attraction and um they talked about what they did to get help and what they do to make sure that no harm is ever done and what the impact on their life, what they had to go through, how it impacted their marriages, and also their experience of that attraction. One thing that I thought was really interesting was one guy talked about for him, he's um, attracted to like six year old girls. But his experience was like, I was growing up and I was, I was just attracted to girls. But then as I got older, my attraction just stayed at the same age of a young child. Like it was like a sexual development where I was going, 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 and then it just got stuck. 
where he kept getting older, but then his sexual development didn't also come with it. And that's not something that you can just like, just change. Um, I mean, if you could change it, then why wouldn't you? He would. <laughs> like, honestly, like imagine being having such an inconvenience <laughs> framing of your brain. Like, honestly, if anybody had this and they could change it, why they would change it like that? <laughs> yeah anyways yeah it's so rough i think yeah. um yeah it yeah so i i suggest people um go check out uh i think i think it was called yeah p file ranch i can't quite remember atheist republic needs your help we have been the target of many legal attacks by hindu nationalists ever since our founder armin Abhabi blasphemed against hindu deities we have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.